Okay. So then I, I wanted to just touch upon uh, a few more thoughts that I had, which, uh, which have to do more with cultural behavioral aspects, which I think are also important for us to continue to think about and continue to focus on. I think as the organization um, evolves and, and even if we continue to be in the NBFC construct, um, there are a few, few things that we need to keep reinforcing in the organization and we need to keep thinking about as a group. Uh, in terms of how we behave and how we work with each other. So as I've said before, from, you know, we have to be focused on our, on, on our values and what we've outlined are our core values. And out of that, I've said that it's important for us to, to make sure that uh, on partnership, on initiative, and on excellence, we continue to have uh, enough focus and attention because those are, those are important. Those are important in terms of how we deal with each other, and those are important in terms of how we deal with the external environment. Um, I think another thing that I would say we need to focus on a lot more um, within the organization is uh, responsiveness. I think it's actually quite annoying and frustrating f uh, for a lot of people that it just takes too much time and energy to get anything done. Multiple levels of follow-up, multiple people having to chase people up. We just have to be a lot more responsible and we have to make sure that we are responsive. We are responsive to each other and we are more resp responsive when we are dealing with the external environment. We have, to, we have to react a lot faster and we have to, uh, we have to do things on our own with, with, with an element of initiative and an, an element of being self-starters without having to be prodded and pushed all the time. So, you know, this is obviously a frustration amongst various parts of the organization that have to deal with businesses not being responsive or businesses having to deal with shared services not being responsive. Whichever way it is, I think collectively we just need to be mindful of the fact that if somebody has asked you something or if you need to do something, you just stay on top of it and get it done without, you know, 25 messages and, you know, multiple levels of follow-up. I, I just don't think that's the right attitude. So we should all focus on being a lot more responsive to each other and to uh, other stakeholders that we're dealing with. Um, in addition to that, I, you know, there are a few other behavioral aspects that, I, that are important for me and I think are important for uh, the organization if we think about, um, you know, what it takes to really differentiate ourselves in the marketplace. And for any people intensive business and talent intensive business, it is about people. That, that is all it is. That's the asset and that's the asset that you've got to leverage and that's the asset that you've got to try and get the most out of. And I think um, a core part of trying to um, make sure that we're a well-oiled machine is to try and figure out ways in which we can all work better. And we will, we will work a lot better with each other if we trust each other a lot more. And if we're able to really leverage um, each other's strengths a lot more. And I think this, this has to do with how we, how we work with each other and how we treat each other. So I think from that perspective, there are a few things that we need to do uh, a, a lot more of. And I think uh, we need to think about these things more deeply and, uh, and, and try and reflect on them and see how we can actually, um, you know, to use a cliche, walk the talk rather than just keep uh, thinking about these as concepts. So one, one thing that's important, for instance, is authenticity. So it is very important for people to really get what they see, right? There's no point in playing games. There's no point in people trying to do things, having hidden agendas. That doesn't, that doesn't help building trust internally or externally. But I'm now talking more internally. So just think straight, talk straight, do what you have to do, treat people with respect. And, you know, that is critical. I don't think, uh, you know, if, 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 people, if people don't come across as authentic, it doesn't, it doesn't help. So I think we should all think about uh, authenticity as, as an important behavioral aspect of how we come across. Um, the other thing I would say is transparency. Transparency is important. And I very often I find that people try and take um, advantage of, um, or, or put it another way, people try and derive power f 
from an information advantage or an information arbitrage. That is absolutely essential when you are working with the external environment. Okay? That is important because if you do not have any additional information or knowledge or any, any, other, any other edge, then it is very difficult to compete. Do not do that internally. It is just, it just not right. You cannot derive power from information advantage. You need to share information, you need to share relationships, you need to collaborate. If you are going to use information advantage as a source of power, I can guarantee you that is a that's short term thinking. You will not get very far. So, please share information, please collaborate, share relationships, share whatever knowledge you have. That is the only way you will build trust, that is the only way I think uh, collectively we will be able to compete with the external world. Do not get caught up internally about you know how you are going to be perceived better than the other guy because you held back some information that he should have known and therefore you look smarter than the other guy. It does not help. People can see through that. We are not idiots. I mean, we are all, we have all worked in, in the environment for a long time. All this is fairly transparent. So, there is no point in engaging in that type of victim. Um, the third thing I would say is um, we need to have you know honest open communication. And what I mean by that is uh, I want people to feel comfortable uh, sharing bad news quickly. You need to share bad news immediately and you need to be comfortable sharing bad news immediately. And the only way you will be comfortable sharing bad news is if managers basically take a mature view and a mature approach to any situation. Right? We, will, we are in the business of taking risk, we are not in the business of running a risk free trade. So, you will necessarily make mistakes. As long as um, you know, we have done the right thing, we have done things to the best of our ability, people will make mistakes. We have to be more tolerant and we have to you know, we have to get people to, you know, be more honest and open about what's going on. And uh, in a, in a, from a management perspective, the bad news has to surface quickly. There's no point in people sweeping things under the carpet. Fir baad mein kuch aajayega. Then you always have some rationale to justify something. Just be open about it. This is what has happened. This is why it happened. And let's deal with it. So. I think honest open communication is the third is the third thing that I would say is important for all of, for all of us to to focus on and uh, we all manage people in some context to make people comfortable to come up and talk to each one of us about whatever it is that's going on and uh, you know deal with it it's not uh, it's not the end of the world um, the next thing I would say is um, um, it, it, it's also important uh, for us to empathize a lot more. I find that uh, totally insufficient in our organization for some reason. Um, and empathy has uh, a couple of aspects to it. You cannot empathize unless you actually understand what the other guy does. You cannot. Right? You have got to be able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes to be able to empathize. And I, I mean unless you develop an understanding, unless you reach out, unless you try and take that extra effort to get to know people more, to, to get to know what he or she does, what he or she might be going through, what that business is going through. And when a business goes through certain difficulty, people in that business go through difficulty. I mean difficulty not in terms of, uh, but just emotionally, right? People do not feel as good as another part of the business that is doing well. That is just, that's just the way life is. And all businesses go through cycles. Different businesses do well at different points in time. We have a portfolio of businesses. We are in these businesses for the long term. We will be supportive of these businesses. But at a, at a personal level, it is important for all of us to engage more with others and to empathize more um, and to try and understand what other people are doing and what it takes to do well in that business or what stress that business is going through. So, I think let us try and do more of that and I think it is also important uh, in, in that construct to, um, 
to also um, make sure that um, you empathize with your bosses. Okay. And uh, the reason I'm saying that is uh, it's always very easy to to be critical and to say kya ho gaya, yehi kya to kya bada kya. You know, let's have a more positive attitude, right? Empathize with your bosses as well. It's not it's not always easy, and uh, people have to take certain decisions. People do certain things, but try and also put yourself in somebody else's shoes and and see what is going on, and try and try and understand the other person a bit better. I think we can all do, we can all do this a lot more than what, uh, and what uh, at least I see around, around me. And, I, and I'm not saying this as, uh, this applies to everybody in the organization, including myself, including everybody in senior management. So we all need to do a lot more of this. Um, what else? Um, yeah, the other thing that we need to certainly do, um, more of is, uh, and this is more from a management perspective, is uh, people development. And people development is not checking the box. I met somebody in my half yearly review, which five this minute baat kia, kya karna hai, development, kuch training, check the box, do a couple of training courses. I think there has to be a genuine desire amongst managers to see their people succeed, right? Over time, it doesn't happen overnight. <coughs> but you won't get there and you won't get your people to the point they need to be unless you spend time with them. You can just leave them on their own and say that, you know, just swim or sink. But that's one way of dealing with people. The other way of dealing with people is different people need different types of hand-holding in order to get the best outcome. And I'm not sure managers spend enough time with people. It's a customized solution. I mean, it is, I mean, in some sense, when you think about it, you have to deal with each person differently. And managers have to spend a lot more time with people to understand the issues, and then figure out what it takes to motivate people and get the best out of them, and truly come across as someone who's genuinely interested in their well-being and their development. That is our job as managers. If we're not able to develop people and get the best out of people and actually see people succeed, then we failed. So I think it's, it's, it's important for all of us who, when we're dealing with people, managing people, that you have to come across as, 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 um, uh, as really serious and keen about seeing development and seeing a person succeed, seeing a person achieve full potential, and as I've said before, positioning a person for success. If you believe he's in the wrong role, that he's better suited for something else, do what it takes to position him for success. Don't let him just keep continuing down that path, he will fail, and that's not the right thing. From a management perspective, either you haven't understood people who are working for you, or having understood them, you haven't done enough to fix whatever issues might exist. So I think we're in the business of, uh, you know, it's, it's a talent intensive business, it's a people business. We don't do enough uh, to develop our people and to take care of our people. And I think, uh, you know, we all get caught up in our day to day um, business objectives and running around to generate revenues and income or whatever else we end up doing. But it's very critical for us to also make sure that we focus on our human resource asset asset pool, which is really the only asset we have. And that will really be the key differentiator for us long term. So I think it's important for us to continue to focus on that. Um, that's really it. Heavy duty stuff. Friday night, Friday evening, pre-Diwali. But at least um, some food for thought for the next year. But uh, I, I just feel these are important things, these are things that I think about and care about. It's important for all of us to think about. Um, and as an organization, we'll do a lot better if, um, you know, we collaborate better, we share information, we help each other, and uh, we have a good talent pool. We can get a lot more out of a more energized talent pool. People will be 
uh, people will be more self starters will be energized will go that extra mile to do something for you or for the organization but they need to be suitably encouraged motivated developed so we need to do all of this okay